In my prior videos, we talked about router solicitations, router advertisements, and how this Slack communication happens, how it sends out these flags, lets the client know. So we've talked about a lot of aspects when it comes to Slack, but I wanna cover a couple more specific things about Slack before we get into the configuration of it. So in this video, we'll talk a little more detail around Slack. Slack stands for Stateless Address Auto Configuration. And the idea behind this is when a client machine joins the network, it doesn't have to be given an IP address. It, the client comes up with its own IP address, so for, therefore it is stateless. I'm not going to state an IP address for you to take. So that is the idea behind this, and we know that it happens through these router solicitations and router advertisements, and the information is given to this demo laptop around the network and the default gateway, but it doesn't give any like specifics about the IP address itself. When a router connects to your network, it will join a couple different multicast groups. One of them is gonna be FF0, two colon colon one and FF02 colon colon two. The FF02 colon colon one, that's the all nodes. And that's actually the same multicast group that all of your machines on your network is going to be a part of. So that is what's taking the place of a broadcast. So the next multicast group that is going to join is this FF02 colon colon two, and that is gonna be the routers. And so anything that joins this FF02 colon colon two then can send out these router advertisements. So what will happen is when this demo laptop connects to the network, it's also going to join the FF02 colon colon one group, the all nodes group. And it's also going to send out a router solicitation. And it's going to send out this router solicitation going to the FF02 colon colon two multicast group. So you will have multiple, or you could have multiple routers connected into your network. And that router solicitation is going to connect to each one of those routers or get sent to each one of those routers that's participating. And then these routers are going to send out router advertisements back to this demo laptop. And so now this demo laptop will get information about its networks. When these router advertisements get sent back, the router advertisements get sent back to FF02 colon colon one. So it gets sent out to all of the devices. So that is the difference between the router solicitation, which is sent out to all the routers, versus the router advertisement, which gets sent out to all nodes on your network and those, uh, that multicast group. The router advertisement is gonna have some information in it. For instance, it's gonna have the network that it's a part of. It's also gonna have its own address, and so that machine, that client machine, knows the address of the default gateway. So it gets some information about it. But what the client needs to do is, now that it knows the network portion of it, and it sees that it, the auto configuration flag is turned on, so it sees that Slack is operating, and it's going to need to generate the host bits side of this, and it's gonna to need to generate something that no other machine on the network has. There's two ways that it can do this. It can use that EUI64 modified, or it could use the randomly generated. Now, different equipment out there will do different aspects to this by default. For instance, your Cisco equipment uses the EUI64 by default versus your Windows machines on there will be randomly generated. And so your client machines, your machines on your network are somehow gonna have to come up with that, that client bits uh, part of this. So when we this happens, the question is, is, well, how does it know that it's going to create a unique address? Well, the EUI64 should be pretty straightforward. It uses the MAC address 
to come up with the host bits portion of it. Your MAC address is 48 bits long. The host portion of this is 64 bits. So what it will do is it'll add some more and I have another video that talks about how it comes up with the EUI 64 portion of this. So I'm not gonna go in depth into that, but essentially, since it uses the MAC address, and MAC address are the burned in address or the unique address, it should be unique in the world. And no other device on your network should have that same MAC address. Now, there are times you can, you can actually assign MAC addresses to the machines or if it's some sort of virtual appliance that maybe it has the same MAC address. So in that case, that wouldn't be the ideal scenario there. But for the most part, your MAC address should be unique on your network, and, and so therefore that EUI64, if it's using that, should be create a completely unique IP version 6 address. Now let's talk about randomly generated. We're talking about 64 bits that are randomly generated. The chances that another machine on that network randomly generates 64 bits the same as your machine or the, uh, another machine on the network is unlikely. It's, it, the chances are pretty small but there are as a chance and it will come up every once in a while. So that's where we get into that duplicate address detection, the DAD process to make sure that it is a unique address on this network. And that's where that it'll do that neighbor solicitation to make sure that that address is not taken and then you will get a neighbor advertisement back. If it is taken, it'll get a neighbor advertisement back.